psychological study from the National Institute of Mental Health. Just this morning, the Wall Street's longtime psychiatrist. The circle of depression is growing wider, broader. Fifteen percent of women suffer from this disorder. Over 20 million Americans. Changes that have occurred in the Abnormalities in the neurotransmitters. Six million American kids take prescribed medication. But what if the criminal is mentally ill? The punishment, a form of aversion therapy. Oppositional defiant disorder. Everywhere you look, there it is. Think psychiatry has nothing to do with you? Think again. The whole field of psychiatry has gotten into every facet of your life. They basically believe that everyone is mentally ill. You smoke too much, it's a disease. You are too unhappy, it's a disease. You're too thin, it's a disease. You're too fat, it's a disease. Where are these coming from? These are coming from the minds of psychiatrists that are dreaming these things up, writing papers and, get, and getting published with their names on it, calling, creating these new diseases. First he said that I had ADD, then he said that I was depressed, then he said I might be bipolar, but I don't have ADD anymore. And he said, you know, I've been noticing you and I, I wonder if you have it too. What they decided is that both my husband and my son had a chemical imbalance that needed to be corrected with a chemical balancer. There is not one shred of credible evidence that any respectable scientist would consider valid demonstrating that anything that psychiatrists call mental illness are brain diseases or biochemical imbalances. It's all fraud. There is no reliability of diagnosis and there is no science. It's just pseudoscience. It's pretend science. This is one of the most open secrets in all of America in the psychiatric field that nothing, nothing is being done that's legitimate and they're billing for it. Psychiatrists claim that over one billion of the world's population is mentally ill. In the past 30 years, they have prescribed psychiatric medications to 543 million people. And right now, they drug 17 million school children with stimulants and antidepressants. When recently asked about the scientific basis of their profession, those psychiatrists willing to be interviewed offered no nothing but excuses. Psychiatric uh, uh, illness is, uh, is not really an uh, illness. How do you uh, evaluate if someone is cured or, or sick? Cure is certainly something we look forward to. We had no earthly idea how to accomplish. We're not good at causes. We don't know what causes mental illness. But that hasn't stopped them from pronouncing themselves mental health experts and treating people against their will. And the results? This psychiatrist, man who's supposed to work to heal people, has done nothing but destroy this man's life, and in destroying his life, destroying the lives of all of his loved ones. Excuse me. They've damaged and ruined my son, and they've trapped him in a system. The way that they treated him and made him feel like he was worthless. Ryan was being kept dumb and, and high on Ritalin so that they could make $2,500 per month. He gave me Valium and um, I got addicted to it. It wiped out my life. My life has been ruined. Uh, my joy has been stolen. She was lying there. She took two two gasps of air and died right there in front of me. It is really tragic. It's awful. And it's being done for money. That's why it's being done. Oh, it's got to be in the billions. I don't know the exact number, but it's got to be in the billions. It's, it, it's just unbelievable. This is so big that it's, it buckles the mind. Take the human tragedy you have just seen and multiply it by the millions. In the past four decades, nearly twice as many Americans have died in government psychiatric hospitals than in all U.S. wars since 1776. Insurance companies pay out $69 billion every year for psychiatric services, doubling the cost of medical insurance premiums. And while raking in over $2 trillion annually, psychiatrists cannot point to a single cure. 
Hard to believe? That's exactly what they count on. And as we will show you, it's how they have been getting away with it from the very beginning. I'm Dr. Peter Bregan, and this is the first in my series of simple truths about psychiatry. Today I'm talking about biochemical imbalances. Has anyone ever told you that you had a biochemical imbalance? Did you go to the doctor feeling anxious or stressed or depressed and have them say, oh yeah, it's genetic, it's biochemical, you need a psychiatric drug? Well, you might be surprised to learn that the only biochemical imbalances in the brains of people who see psychiatrists are the ones put in there by the psychiatrists. We don't have any evidence that any routine psychiatric problem from anxiety to depression and even schizophrenia has anything to do with a biochemical imbalance. So where did an idea like that come from? We know the answer. It was actually made up by the brilliant minds at the drug company, Eli Lilly. Even before Prozac was approved for depression by the FDA, Lilly was sending its minions, its paid physicians and consultants, out into the world to say that depression was caused by a biochemical imbalance, and in particular, a kind of sluggish serotonin neurotransmitter, just not enough serotonin working. But Lilly knew from the beginning that it wasn't very simple, that this drug Prozac wasn't exactly going to jack up your serotonin like it was supposed to. The whole idea behind Prozac was that it would block the removal of serotonin from those active places in your brain called the synapses. You know, here's one cell and it just dropping Prozac into the, not Prozac, here's, here's one um, cell and it's dropping serotonin into the synapse and here's the other cell and it's picking up serotonin and then comes Prozac and it blocks the removal of the serotonin from this space. And that's supposed to mean you're going to puddle serotonin, you're going to increase serotonin in the synapse. Well, in fact, and Lily knew this, knew this before the drug was approved, the brain doesn't like to have the serotonin puddling in its synapses, and the brain responds by stopping producing serotonin. It responds by increasing its ability to remove serotonin. It responds by becoming less sensitive to serotonin. So from the beginning, it was a flim-flam. It was a PR claim that you got biochemical imbalances and Prozac's gonna fix it. So, what do you conclude from this? People who have emotional problems, you, me, we all have emotional problems, we don't have anything wrong in our brains. And if we do, if someday some of these problems turn out to be caused by something going on in our brains rather than in our lives, in our emotions, in our hearts, in our feelings, if it turns out to be so, then psychiatric drugs aren't fixing them because psychiatric drugs are causing biochemical imbalances in your brain. They get into the normal brain and they change it. Whether it's nicotine, that you're smoking, whether it's alcohol you're drinking, the drug is changing your brain. And that's why when you stop, you get a withdrawal reaction because the drug has changed your brain. No doubt about it. I'll tell you a simple story. Um, I used to drink too much coffee. I had my office in my home years and years ago and the coffee pot was there and you know, the, had my office built on to the outside of the house. And I would just drink coffee all day long. One day, I got depressed. I got fatigued. I got achy. I thought, what is going on here? I feel like I need to drink some more coffee. So I drank more coffee, didn't do any good. I drank some more coffee, didn't do any good. For two days, I had a gradually improving sense of fatigue and just feeling lifeless and not really happy about what I was doing. And then on the second day, my wife, Ginger, said, I could hear her voice from the kitchen, oh my God, honey, 
I put the decaffeinated coffee into the coffee can. You've been in coffee withdrawal for two days. Now, if coffee could do that to you, and be that confusing to me, a psychiatrist who knows about drugs, so confusing I didn't know what my feelings were, that I thought I was depressed when I was going through withdrawal from a mild stimulant. Imagine withdrawing from other psychiatric drugs, and that will be a separate uh, story for you. But right now, I want you to know that the biochemical imbalances in your brain right now, if you're taking psychiatric drugs, are caused by the psychiatric drugs. Consider how a drug is selected to be studied as a psychiatric drug. Well, it can't be studied by showing it corrects biochemical imbalances because we don't know about any biochemical imbalances. The way a drug is studied to find one to test for psychiatry is you find the drug that causes a biochemical imbalance in the brain of a rat. It causes a biochemical imbalance in the normal brain of the animal. And that's just what Prozac did, it's what Paxil or Zoloft does, it's what Abilify or Risperdal does, it's what all the psychiatric drugs do. They muck about in the brain in this marvelous, complex, incredible organ, more complicated than the whole rest of the universe. It's a toxin in there that's changing things in which ways in which we can't anticipate. Then it becomes up to the drug companies to promote that it's not causing a biochemical imbalance, it's curing one. So listen, get focused on what's real. And what's real is our struggles to live, our struggles to be happy, our struggles to overcome childhood problems and adult stresses. Get focused on yourself as a human being who's alive and whose brain is adequate to the tasks ahead.